Hi everyone. Uh, thanking you for joining our second webinar in uh, in a series of open banking uh, webinars that we are conducting um, in line with our uh, WC2 open banking 1.5 release. Um, so uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Dasana. Um, I'm working as a solution architect uh, from the uh, WSO2 Sydney office, and I'm leading multiple open banking projects uh, in, in Australia and contributing to uh, some of the initiatives uh, in Singapore and New Zealand. And um, I have contributed uh, to the consumer data register of uh, Australian Competition and Consumer uh, Commission. And uh, with this webinar, my colleague Ravin is collaborating with me. Ravin is a software engineer and an open banking product specialist uh, who is working with uh, WS2 open banking product team. Um, so moving on. So in, in this webinar, we will be uh, mostly focusing on payment services directive version two uh, compliance and their derivations. And uh, after we go through the compliance, we will be looking at uh, what is installed for you uh, beyond the specification or beyond the compliance. So first we will look at the overview of uh, the support that is provided on WSO2 Open Banking Solution on OBUK, uh, the Berlin Next Gen PSP2 framework. And we will briefly touch upon uh, Australia's uh, consumer data st uh, st standard or consumer data rights for open banking. And then uh, we will look at uh, set of reference implementations across the globe. And we will try to identify similar similarities between these um, initiatives, the principle behind those, and then go into a, a, a specific case study. And uh, we'll look at um, the key learnings that we have kind of derived from those uh, deployments. Yes, so if I will hand over uh, uh, the control to Ravine to go through the uh, PSP to specific uh, details and the related information. Thank you, Dasana. Uh, so under the overview, uh, we will be looking at uh, PSD2 and compliance, uh, WC2 open banking offerings, and the roadmap of WC2 open banking solution. Uh, talking about uh, PSD2 and compliance, uh, Payment Service Directive 2 by uh, European Union mandated that the bank should open up their APIs to external entities or third party service providers. Even though it started with the European Union or UK, now it is uh, well established in several regions of the globe. WC2 Open Banking Solution supports uh, several specifications. So as examples, uh, Open Banking for UK, uh, Open Banking for Berlin, the next gen PSD2 APIs. And in our latest release, we have added the support for Open Banking Australia Consumer Data Standard version 1.3.0. Uh, support for existing specifications can be enabled via uh, configurations in our solution. Uh, even though WSO2 solution have multiple specification implemented, uh, enabling required specification is uh, easily achieved due to its configuration based model. Uh, apart from well established uh, specifications due to a global trend in open banking, there are several other new emerging specifications as well. Uh, while exploring and implementing these uh, new specifications, we make sure that uh, our already supported specifications, regulations are uh, up to date and uh, stay compliant. Um, talking about uh, emerging open banking standards, uh, regions such as Mexico, Brazil, and Russia are coming up with their own uh, specification, regulation. However, uh, most of these uh, new specifications are based on the OB UK specification, which is a specification uh, fully supported and compliant by WSO2 Open Banking Solution. 
uh, with this uh, expertise, WSO2, OB, R&D engineers are not only working in the implementation side, but also we manage a strong connection, a strong uh, relationship with these uh, regulatory bodies. So we make sure uh, to use our expertise to give feedback and also forward any questions uh, when, uh, regarding these specification and helping these specifications to evolve. Uh, now, uh, Dasana will be talking about open banking solution while explaining key features, technology components, and uh, key services. Over to you, guys. Thanks, Ravi. So, uh, as you look at uh, the WC2 open banking solutions current state, uh, it's a comprehensive package which supports multiple specifications, and it's a single vendor solution. So, we built uh, the open banking solution from ground up using set of building blocks that we have been building for almost a decade. So those building blocks were uh, proven uh, in multiple domains, in multiple geographies. Uh, they were built for digital transformation. So what we did was we assembled those uh, components into a solution and it became the open banking solution. So it's not an, an acquisition uh, that WS2 has done. So we have not acquired set of companies, products, and kind of build a cocktail, nothing like that. It, it was built from the ground up using uh, proven components. I'm uh, moving on. So if you look at the, the WS2 open banking solution, um, I would like to call it as a framework or a, a platform. Uh, it has a wider capability and depth in, in individual capabilities. So it's a comprehensive solution. So if you look at this diagram, so it supports open standards in API. So it supports open API specification three. Um, not only the compliance related API definitions and API behavior, so it can be used to extend the capabilities and provide competitive advantage providing additional data, the value additions that you can provide. It comes with uh, data security in data, like transport layer and, 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 and at the persistent layer. And it supports multiple data security regulations and, and standards. Uh, to name one, uh, PCI DSS and other ISO standards as well. And it is packaged with a set of integrators that would integrate with the existing banking systems, or we can call it as adapters, and it supports all enterprise integration patterns. So most of those enterprise integration patterns are configuration driven. So you can use your existing banking systems that are available on your ecosystem to uh, consume data and, and get uh, services built as capability. And it comes with uh, consumer consent management capabilities. So these um, you know, UI flows are built against UX standards that come with uh, different specification in different regions. Um, and they can be extended to uh, have your own themes, your uh, different you know, logos, labels, and things like that. So it can be, it's, it's a wild label product, so you can, it can be themed based on your requirements. Um, so we, we come with uh, anomaly detection and fraud detection capabilities. So we have a, a stream processing module, which basically analyze real-time information and as well as it can perform um, batch analytics. So it produces business intelligence on top of the information that is being gathered. And we provide third-party onboarding uh, through dynamic client registration and uh, manual client registration. So those ca uh, capabilities are available based on the individual specifications. So what you do is you enable a specific profile when you deploy uh, to a region. And we produce a lot of, inform a lot of data uh, from API usage, the um, interaction pattern, the identity contexts, the consent uh, uh, management uh, interactions. Uh, so we, what we do is like we gather that information, we process, we identify patterns, and then we provide uh, reports 
Um, so as an example, some of those reporting capabilities are made available as APIs, uh, especially on the Australian CDR specification. And as well as we provide summarize reports to be published to regulatory bodies uh, in, in, in a timely fashion. And we provide third-party lifecycle management, uh, onboarding third parties, managing their interactions uh, on a well-defined lifecycle management process. Uh, we excel in uh, security, uh, both API security and identities and access management. Uh, so we have many capabilities beyond the standard compliance, uh, like you know, adapter authentication, multi-step authentication, um, many types of uh, security standards being uh, complied. Uh, one of the components that we use within the open banking solution is OpenID certified, and it supports FAPI read-write uh, profile. And the last thing, last uh, capability that we provide is the developer portal. So this is a collaboration space which exposes APIs uh, for third-party developer collaboration. So we provide uh, a kind of uh, a social media experience on top of this. So as you can see, this is a packaged uh, solution with multiple capabilities, not not uh, ends at the compliance, but it, it goes long way providing digital transformation capability on top of uh, the compliance. Uh, moving on. As you uh, can see on this diagram, the WC2 open banking solution is uh, developed using a modular architecture. So we have multiple modules. Uh, there are four modules, API management, identity and access management, integration and analytic. Uh, they have built in a way that they are loosely coupled. So they, they these components interact with each other using APIs and events, and they can be deployed independently based on your need. You can pick and choose each individual components because in your banking ecosystem, you might have, have uh, an identity solution available already. So you might have identity so available. So you don't need that identity cable. You need to integrate into your existing identity provider and provide API management. So likewise, you can pick and choose individual components. And because of this modular architecture, each of these components can independently scale. Uh, as an example, uh, based on our experience, the API management component scales faster. So they, they need to have a more scalable uh, deployment rather uh, compared to the other components. And these components can be deployed in many deployment models from bare metal to VMs, uh, the cloud, hybrid cloud, and then in container deployment as well. So you can pick and choose. You can choose whatever the deployment you like and build your open banking solution which lives with your ecosystem components. Uh, so, so that's the beauty of the architecture of the open banking solution. Um, yeah, move forward. So if you look at how the open banking solution would fit into your ecosystem, uh, this picture briefly explain how the um, uh, how, how the component would fit in. So WC2 Open Banking Platform will live within your internal bank network. This is the standard pattern that we have seen, but it can live outside as well. It can live on a cloud and communicate with your internal bank network through APIs or through a, a dedicated VPN channel or cloud to cloud peering. Um, so what would happen is, uh, as I explained earlier, like through the integration module, it will communicate with co-banking systems, credit card systems, digital banking system, um, something like a fraud, a fraud management system. So it will integrate and extract information, exchange information. And uh, within the internal bank network, it will play the role of the integration module. So it will provide the capability of integrating internal departments, internal working groups as well. 
So it provides internal collaboration. And moving outside from the your internal banking network, it provides external collaboration as well. So uh, the internal capabilities can be exposed as APIs uh, in different protocols, in different definitions. Uh, of course, we will comply with the uh, open banking specific, but you can go beyond that and, and provide that um, different collaborative channels. And we provide these collaborative spaces like you know developer portal, which the other developers, the partners, the other institutions can look at your APIs, uh, work with your sandbox, and things like that. So we provide that collaboration space for external interactions or collaborations as well. Not only that, we interact with regulatory uh, bodies like in, in Australia, it will be Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. In, in OB, uh, in the, uh, there are other regulatory bodies in other regions. So we provide that interaction as well. Uh, so the platform lives with your ecosystem component and provide both internal collaboration and external collaboration. So that's how the uh, open banking fits into your ecosystem. Yeah. Um, moving forward. So the key services that is provided with this package is uh, the we provide full lifecycle support through design, delivery, maintenance, and beyond. Um, so the, the term beyond is very important here. So once you achieve open banking compliance, we will continue to help you to reap benefits of the platform. Because as I said earlier, this is a digital transformation platform. So you can build a digital transformation journey on top of the platform and we will help you. We will share the experience that we have working across different specifications, different regions, different domains, and we will help you to build that. Um, as So we provide them as advisory um, services and as well as we can kind of predict where your specification is moving because uh, if you look at how the global specifications or the initiatives have built, they have started from the Europe and some of the attributes have carried on to the other regions. Uh, so we are in touch with these developments. We are working with regulatory bodies frequently and we are providing our feedback as well. So we can provide our uh, we can define kind of patterns against these specifications. And we support manage cloud deployments as well. So we can manage the open bank in deployment for you on a managed cloud service uh, that is uh, available as a package. And of course, we can provide uh, different consultancy package which would uh, come up with um, you know different models of using other capabilities on top of uh, the regulatory compliance and enhance your return or investment into the open banking. Yeah, moving forward. Yeah, with this, I will hand over uh, the control to Ravin to go into the specifics of uh, the uh, PSD2 and the PSD2 next gen specification. Thank you, Dasana. Uh, so let's talk about the latest release of uh, WSO2 Open Banking Solution, uh, the version 1.5.0, uh, where we focus not only on uh, mere compliance, but also uh, going beyond that. Uh, first thing first, uh, the compliance. Uh, WSO2 Open Banking Solution is a purpose-built solution for uh, regulatory compliance. So in this spring release, uh, we have updated the Berlin Group next in PST2 APIs to version 1.3.4 to stay compliant. And with this, we have updated all uh, payment APIs, account APIs, and authorization APIs from 1.3.3 to 1.3.4. Uh, there are some other uh, functional and non-functional features we have added. And uh, one of the main uh, functional feature is the frequency per day throttling policy. Uh, talking about the frequency per day uh, throttling in brief, uh, it will allow the banks to limit uh, third party service providers' requests 
to a specific uh, API resource. So this will uh, avoid unnecessary high demand on bank systems. And also this will uh, not allow uh, TPPs to uh, abuse the consent given uh, to them by their uh, user. Then uh, moving on to uh, the updates on uh, open banking UK specification uh, with 1.5.0 release, uh, we will be supporting uh, version 3.1.1 uh, for uh, accounts, payments and confirmation of funds APIs. And we will be also adding the uh, uh, event notification version 3.1.2 support. So with this event notification, it will allow uh, the banks to send uh, specific uh, events to TPPs. Uh, so these uh, TPPs, uh, third party service providers, can uh, register to receive these uh, specific events from the bank uh, via uh, real time event specification uh, notification API or the aggregate, aggregated polling API. Uh, also, with the UK specification, we make sure that we run uh, a part the particular uh, suite to uh, make sure that we stay compliant. So for the security test suite, we are running Open ID Confirmation Suite 3.3.1. Then for the functional test suite, we are running Functional Confirmation Suite 2.6.0. And for the dynamic client registration, we are running the version 1.0.3. Uh, and finally, uh, we have our latest addition for our supported uh, specifications. Uh, now the open banking solution uh, support fully uh, compliant with the Australian Consumer Data Standard version 1.2. So uh, we have added the uh, major features such as uh, dynamic client registration, uh, API flow for consumer data standards, uh, metadata cache management, endpoint versioning, and uh, etc. And we will also uh, updating the Australian Open Banking specification, the consumer data standards, in the future as well. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, a WSO2 Open Banking solution is not only about uh, mere compliance. Uh, with this release, we are enabling features that will uh, allow uh, banks to facilitate use cases beyond just compliance. So with this uh, spring release, WSO2 uh, Open Banking version 1.5.0 release, uh, we have enabled the ability to uh, deploy and manage uh, non-regulatory APIs, the APIs which uh, are not defined by a regulatory body but are used by the banks in order to support their use cases in the same solution. So uh, the support to publish uh, non-regulatory APIs which are used to deliver additional value to consumers, uh, employees, internal teams, and uh, ecosystem partners like fintechs can now be deployed in the same open banking solution. So this will allow the banks uh, to fully utilize WSO2 APIM facilities as well. Uh, not only that, but the WSO2 open banking solution uh, also allows bank to use their uh, existing infrastructure when uh, moving to the digital banking domain. So uh, this uh, digital transformation can uh, leverage on the existing infrastructure rather than completely moving to a new model. Uh, let's move on and let's discuss uh, what is there in the roadmap of uh, WSO2 Open Banking Solution. So uh, for 2020 roadmap highlights, as you can see, uh, we are uh, focusing mainly prioritizing on enhancements which we can uh, enable to help uh, banks even with a smaller infrastructure or a smaller developer team to fully experience the open banking experience. So for example, uh, features such as uh, multi-tenancy support, the micro gateway support, uh, the deployment automation. So this will allow, uh, this will help in enhancing the OB experience even for uh, smaller banks across the globe. And uh, other than that, uh, we also expanding our support to other regions, new regions as mentioned before, like uh, Mexico and Brazil. Uh, looking a little ahead, 
uh, we have uh, several focus areas. So uh, WSO2 Open Banking Solution plans to enhance uh, the OB experience even more uh, by integrating some of these functionalities. So as you can see, uh, uh, for example, enhancing the developer portals, which uh, will allow fintechs to uh, engage with the banks more at their marketplace. Then uh, simplifying the deployment, which will allow banks to uh, even more uh, enhance the experience in of WSO2 Open Banking Solution. So fun uh, features like these are uh, planned ahead for uh, WSO2 Open Banking. And uh, while all these uh, features are being focused, we are also making sure that the already supported specifications, uh, uh, those uh, updated specifications uh, are updated in our solution as well. Uh, now I will hand over the session to Dasana again. Uh, over to you, Dasana. Yeah, so um, I believe uh, you guys have a good understanding about the uh, PSD2 and its derivated uh, specifications and um, CDR, how the uh, WC2 is supporting those specifications. Uh, let's take a pause and let's uh, look at some of the, uh, you know, open banking initiatives across the globe. Uh, especially, uh, let's start with PSD2 and its derivations and consumer data rights in Australia and as well as we look at the other emerging specifications from Mexico, Brazil and Russia and, and some of the work that we are doing with um, the uh, South Asian uh, region. So moving on, if you look at these different um, open banking initiatives, you can find a set of principles across all of these specifications. And they are built on few building blocks. And you can identify two groups of, uh, you know, uh, items here. So first, the regulated frameworks are being built by different governments. So a good example is PSD2, uh, Payment Services Directive, uh, and Consumer Data Rights from Australia. So it's initiated by the government. Uh, maybe through the pressure from the market as well. But they, they, they revolves around sharing information, sharing data of the banking consumer, and as well as improving collaboration between different players in the market, reducing friction. Um, so that's the, um, the goals of open banking specifications. And, and what these regulations are trying to do is like they trying to standardize the data model, uh, how the data is being um, identified, exchanged, and as well as they would like to standardize the interaction patterns. Um, uh, and and it, it revolves around privacy and uh, safeguarding the data that is being exchanged. And from those regulatory frameworks, there are implementations of those regulatory frameworks. Uh, the good example is TET, Open Banking UK, the Berlin Group, NextGen, PSD2, and um, CDR for banking sector in Australia. So if you look at CDR, CDR is not, um, you know, uh, looking at only banking. It's it's a it's a uh, it's consumer data right across many domains from banking to telcos, um, logistics, healthcare, retail. So it has a broader uh, meaning when it comes to data sharing. So we have, see, uh, we have uh, seen regulated frameworks coming up and there's different implementation of those. Uh, so we, we have worked on, worked on those different specifications and implementations and as well as we are looking at the emerging specifications like Mexico and Brazil. Um, yeah, moving on. So I would like to take an, uh, a detailed example, like go into an implementation that we were involved with. Uh, so we have been involved with a leading bank in Australia. Um, uh, why they have chosen WC2 is uh, because of these reasons. The first thing is, the componentized modular architecture. 
the ability to select capabilities, ability to deploy in multiple deployment, uh, having the multiple deployment options. Uh, so those are the key capabilities uh, that was recognized uh, to be um, and chosen as uh, the open banking platform. And the other thing is we we are not kind of uh, providing open banking compliance only. We are going beyond that. So what we provide is essentially a digital transformation platform, which has been purposefully purposely built for uh, complying with open banking uh, specification. So because of that, um, they chose us. They they want to first achieve open banking compliance and then move on to, or evolve the platform to transform their standard traditional uh, bank into a more digital, more agile, flexible uh, institution which provides banking as a utility service and they want to have this authentic, unique experience, uh, banking experience uh, to be provided to the users. Um, so they want to uh, build products and services very quickly and, and adapt uh, to the changes, the, the behavioral patterns of the customer. Um, so, so we have this, uh, you know, uh, different, two different players. Like, so we have the compliance in build. Uh, we can quickly configure and uh, achieve the compliance. And as well as we have extended capability of um, uh, moving on a digital transformation roadmap, transforming the bank. Um, so, yeah, so moving on. So let's look at uh, the journey that we took uh, on this specific example. So we started with um, having a design workshop in order to understand the ecosystem uh, and look at the uh, needed features from the platform and as well as kind of uh, understand their road and, and probably define the road. So we did the design workshop with the multiple teams, architecture team, the security team, the marketing team, and even the business team. So, um, so we get um, um, you know different perspective within this design workshop. And then we started doing project plans, estimations, and things like that, uh, uh, going on a more of a waterfall model. And then we started implementing this uh, open banking compliance project. So when it comes to open banking compliance and, and deploying the platform, we want to build or we want to make cultural shift within the bank because now what we are heading for is a more agile, flexible uh, 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 bank coming out of this traditional uh, banking silo. So in order to do that, first we need to speak to the people who are running the bank. Uh, so we had hackathons, we had a different workshops, lunch and learn sessions to move the, uh, you know, reduce the friction within the bank, bring all the departments together and, and, and kind of form a, a kind of a startup within the bank. So um, we provided consultancy around that, we provided content, we did a lot of, um, you know, activities within the bank um, and, and, and brought that the cultural shift that was needed um, by the bank. And then we, um, you know, went into the agile uh, Scrum-based implementation process. We went on testing. Uh, uh, for testing, we contributed a lot uh, because uh, we are part of uh, the, uh, um, as an example, like we, we are part of the Australian conformance suite. We are, kind of, we are planning to contribute that. And we were in all the initial designs as well. So, sorry, we, we have a, understanding of how the um, specifications behaves and the other uh, you know functional and unfunctional aspects of the platform um, so after testing we, we certified the solution and we uh, helped them to uh, go live uh, so we have different packages uh, to support go live we call them as go live support packages um, so we made sure that um, the bank has a smooth go live um, without really um, you know, impacting other services that is provided. And once the goal life is completed, then the, uh, what, we, what we didn't stop there. So 
then what we did was we um, you know look at our roadmap and we started the journey of extending the platform and providing broader capability so we have done we have completed the minimum components that we require and we extended the platform to support additional capabilities in making a digital transformation journey and bringing or opening up new revenue channels new ways of interacting with uh, in consumers um, you know providing different offers the packages um, and provide the capability to bundle those uh, in, 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 in different services that are coming from partners that was onboarded to the platform so this is uh, this is the journey that we we took so it's from compliance to the um, you know beyond compliance the compete stage how you can compete with other banks um, so we provide all the capabilities, tools, the consultancy, everything as a package with uh, WC2 Open Banking solution. Uh, so that's the beauty of it, um, you know, WC2 offering. Um, yeah, moving on. So I would like to share some of the key learnings that I've gathered um, working with multiple um, open banking projects uh, from larger banks to uh, credit unions, the building societies, small mutual and things like that. Um, so we need to understand that open banking is an initiative um, taken by governments to push these uh, institutions uh, into digital transformation. So. Uh, we need to embrace digital transformation. The platform provides capabilities, uh, so you need to use those capabilities. And having that, uh, having your bank transform digitally, make uh, it is possible to go into the market faster and be ahead of the competition. Um, and the other thing is, uh, some of the banks may take to build open banking by themselves. Uh, but, but what we have seen is uh, getting a complete solution is more, far more effective than trying to build a solution within the bank. Um, that's what we have learned. And the other thing is you can still get a complete solution and you can use some of the resources available within your ecosystem. Um, you can use uh, the investments that you have made already within your IT ecosystem by having a, a, a you know a, a, a solution that have many integration capabilities and of course you should think beyond the regulatory compliances uh, it's not not you should stop you shouldn't stop at regulatory compliance you should think beyond that um, moving on So when you look at a beyond compliance, the, the platform provides a lot of extension points, a lot of extensibility around the, um, the, the open banking uh, compliance. So as you can see, uh, we provide APIs. We, we have we providing tools and technologies to build APIs and support uh, open API standards. And these APIs can be uh, can use multiple integration protocols like gRPC, GraphQL, uh, Red Soap. Uh, so uh, support for multiple protocols, uh, multiple interaction styles are available. And you can monetize some of the API uh, if you're exposing uh, patterns like uh, consumer behavior patterns based on the data that you have gathered. So you can monetize them. Um, uh, so we support many monetization models from tier based models to pay as you go models and things like that. So we can use those. And as well as um, the monetization model uh, provide integration with different payment services. So uh, it opens up a new revenue channel. And we, uh, and we provide uh, a collaboration space as API sandbox and API marketplace. So your partners, uh, the fintechs, the developers can use these collaboration spaces to look at your API catalogs, the capabilities that you expose, play with them, and, and subscribe to them. Uh, we provide a lot of developer uh, content, and we, we, uh, we help in 
um, you know, setting up hackathons and things like that to kind of uh, uh, build a community around that. And and we have the, as, as I said earlier, like we have the integration capabilities. So we support both data and integration, identity integration. So we have a, a very strong business intelligence component which can work with real time and historical information. And it has the capability of building uh, dashboards and different analytical models. Um, so we provide uh, a strong, like a, a, a broader consent model, and we provide uh, two perspectives. One is the consumer perspective, which works as a self-care consent dashboard. So consumer can come and weave the consents that they have given, uh, manage them, and do things like that. And then we have a administrative view uh, for bank and administrator to uh, look at the uh, consent behalf of the consumer and attach that to uh, a service desk or a help desk. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the platform is very extensible. So we have built it, it in a way that we have created a lot of extension points uh, to be extended. And we have provided pattern samples and everything with our documentation uh, in order to um, extend this platform. Uh, moving on. So this is what uh, we provide as WC2 Open Banking solution. We provide a platform which has default open banking compliance capabilities supporting uh, many specification around the globe. Um, and we provide uh, you to build your digital transformation beyond comfort. Um, so we have uh, the, we have planned another webinar uh, on May 28. Uh, this is in, in in parallel to the uh, Open Banking World Congress. Uh, so we are running um, uh, advertisements on the, uh, on the World uh, Congress. And here, what we we are trying to discuss is uh, we will bring some of the fundamentals from the already established open banking specifications like PSD2 and consumer data rights in Australia. We will look at some of the reference architectures um, that we have built uh, and uh, we will look at some of the reference architectures and work that we have done in other parts like Brazil, Mexico, Russia, Singapore, in South Asia. Um, we will share that information with you um, on this um, session. Um, so with this, uh, we will be concluding the uh, webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post them um, and uh, we can take some time to um, answer the, the questions that you have. So I have two questions. Uh, the first question is, how long uh, a typical Australia projects take? Um, so if you look at Australian specification, it has multiple stages, stage one, stage two, and stage three. Usually the stage one uh, projects will take a maximum of one month because it, it's only have um, product APIs and they are, they, those uh, product APIs are not secure. Uh, it's a read-only API. So um, we can quickly deploy uh, and configure stage one compliance. So it usually takes about one month. Uh, when it comes to stage two, it, it takes about uh, four months because it, the stage two is a little bit complex. Uh, we need to share customer data and as well as on stage two, it includes uh, phase two, three products as well on the uh, product side. Uh, there are many uh, um, different interactions with ACCC. Uh, we need to implement consent uh, management, uh, uh, the flow. Uh, there are reporting requirements. Uh, there are dispute management requirements and things like that. Um, so it will take a little longer than stage one. Um, so the platform provide the full capability across stage one, two, three. Uh, we will take a kind of a, a phased approach. Uh, we will start with stage one and then move on to stage two. Um, there's another question. Uh, let me read that. 
to the data member for JSON objects between WS2 OB API and banks uh, in-house OB API is as part of the OB. Yes. So we, uh, so as I said earlier, uh, the um, WS2 Open Banking has a uh, integration component. So integration uh, components support uh, all enterprise integration patterns. And uh, within these uh, patterns, we have a, a, a canvas, a data paper canvas. So what you can do is you can extract uh, information from your backend system or co-banking systems, and you can transform that data model uh, into a, a data model uh, that supports the compliance. Uh, so that transformation capability and data mapping capability, mapping into JSON objects are available. Uh, not only the um, the compliance, uh, the, the, the data model de defined by the compliance, but you can add uh, more value into this data model by adding, uh, let's say, uh, if you look at an API, you can add additional resources, you can add additional attributes, and as well as you can add APIs as well. Um, you can provide uh, voluntary data uh, on top of your mandatory product and customer data as well. Uh, yes, moving on to the third question. Um, I think it's it's a kind of uh, uh, extension from from the the first question that we had. Um, so yes, um, so when I say the project duration, that's inception to going live, um, but it depends on uh, the the ecosystem, like uh, the banking ecosystem. Uh, it depends on how, what is your digital maturity. So uh, we have seen uh, uh, projects which uh, basically the product data is available on a flat file. So we need to read from that flat file. We need to look at how often that is being updated and things like that. And, the, and, and on the other side, we have seen that we are speaking to a internal API gateway, which provide, um, you know, open banking compliant API. So the projects vary between these, um, and, and sometimes we need to gather information from multiple systems. So we need aggregation capability. Uh, we sometimes the part of the products are if it's the digital banking solution and some of the products are living with the co-banking or something else. So we need to kind of, uh, you know, take those information and aggregate. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we're kind of done with the questions and uh, thank you very much for participating in the webinar. Um, yeah, hoping to you see you at uh, our next webinar um, on uh, May 28th. Thank you very much.